This is FYI on your TV, brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham. I've got my co-host Robbie Hall back with me. Welcome back. Glad to be here, Kathy. You've got nope. a, a guest that's been here before, too. I'll let you introduce her. Good morning, Cindy, and thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, Robbie. You, you donated one of your kidney. When, when di did you do that? Way back when, August 6th, 2009. Had to think about that, 14 years ago. Why, why did you donate one of your kidneys? My husband, John, was in kidney failure and was on dialysis. So this kidney transplant took him off dialysis. How, how did you find out you were able to donate one of your kidneys? Well, it's normally a very long process. Uh, there was someone that was going to donate to John and they went through the testing and it took a year and then they weren't compatible. So because he'd already done all the testing, they kind of fast-tracked me. So I found out within three to four months that I was a match. And um, they, uh, they put you through every kind of test imaginable that you can think of. I, I wasn't sure I had any blood left. <laughs> can you t talk about the day of yours and John's? I'm pretty sure your mom would be able to tell you more about that day with me being out of it. Um, they took John in the night before because of dialysis, so he had to do dialysis. I had to be at the hospital for six. So they, uh, of course, I went in first. And uh, my family and, and your mama were all waiting in the, uh, the family room. And uh, when I came out, I looked into the family room and thought, oh, where's my family? There's no one here but they were already up in the room. They knew which room that I was going to, so they were up there. And I remember uh, going, uh, I must have fallen back to sleep or something, because then I see my bed, and I'm thinking to myself, oh God, this is gonna hurt being transferred from one bed over to another. But I was out of it again, and next thing I knew, I woke up and everyone was in my room. How was your recovery following the surgery? My recovery was excellent. I took two weeks off work. Mind you, I work in an office, so it was easy to go back to work. Um, John, I felt like I'd got hit by a truck when I'd first come to, because of course I'm so healthy that uh, now I've had surgery. And John, John got up pretty much running. He felt so good after uh, um, having the transplants. Even my parents said when they seen him in the morning, he was kind of a gray color. And then after, they had, after the transplant they seen him, he was as pink as pink could be. Like it was immediate for him. He felt better immediately. What would you tell people who are they thinking about organ donations? I would definitely say share your spare. Um, I had it lucky. Maybe some people aren't quite as lucky as I am. Um, but I haven't heard, you know, too many people that have had problems. Um, my surgery was laparoscopic, so they, uh, what happens is it's just uh, three little, two little incisions in uh, your left side, because they prefer to take your left kidney, and uh, then one longer incision, because once they disconnect the kidney, it kind of deflates until they hook it back up again. March is Kidney Health Month. What do you do to stay healthy with one kidney? That is a very hard question for me. Um, I try and drink the water that's recommended, which is a lot, but I don't. Um, I try not to use salt, but I do. <laughs> so not really a lot has changed for me. Touch wood that, you know, my health continues on and uh, my kidney, my one kidney remains as healthy as it has been. I do get checked every year in Ottawa and uh, the only thing that scares me is when I have to step on the scale every year. <laughs> Not the checkup, it's the scale. <laughs> is there anything else you would like to add before we wrap up? 
just that sharing the spare is the easiest thing that anyone can do. And it's very, it's very satisfying to know that you're able to help someone when they're that ill. Um, they told John when he, got my, when he received my kidney that he would never, ever die of kidney failure. Something else would get him. Thank you, Cindy, for joining us today to talk about March being Kidney Health Month. Well, thank you very much for having me. It was a great pleasure. I, I've heard that about people receiving a, an organ donor, uh, an organ uh, kidney, or even a liver transplant, that it's, it's almost immediate. They feel better. Because so it's they, interesting you yeah, say that. Yeah, because they've, they've been sick for so long. Right. And as your kidney, the, your creatinine level, it decreases and decreases and decreases. So it's, it's, it's slow, mm -hmm. but when you get down to the point of being on dialysis, you're, you're getting, you know, it's really really bad at that point. Like John, we had, the, John's kidney transplant was successful. Um, I also had an aunt that had two transplants. And uh, she just passed away a few uh, years ago now, but uh, she was only six years older than I was. She started dialysis, I think at 22, complete dialysis. Like she tried the peritoneal, which is at home dialysis, right. and that didn't work for her. And uh, she rejected the first kidney, and then the second kidney took a blood clot, which is possible as well. So right. she was back on dialysis after both times. And you say John was on dialysis too. Was it the one at home or did he have to go to the clinic? John did the one at home, okay. the peritoneal dialysis. So the, with the peritoneal dialysis, it's um, a catheter in between your layers of skin. Right. So you start, it doesn't matter what time you start it. So he did his at night, but you have to stay hooked up for 12 hours. So, oh. you know, if you started at eight o'clock at night, you're there till eight o'clock in the morning. But John being John learned how to kind of cheat a little bit. So if we were flying out somewhere, he'd, he'd speed up the process. I'm not sure that's legal or allowed, <laughs> but that was John. That's what he did. Right, right. To make it work, to yes. make it work. Yeah, that's oh, right. Well. And I love the way you say it, share your spare. Share your spare. Share yep. your spare. That's, that's wonderful that you did that. Yeah. Now I wanted to get a, a tattoo and, and Dana had uh, made a tattoo of uh, a heart in green with an arrow through it. And I can't remember what the saying was now. Um, she shared the spare or something along that line or she's, she was a hero today or Aww. whatever the case may be. But I didn't have the guts to go ahead and get a tattoo. <laughs> you've got tattoos. I'm sure you've got some scar marks from. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. My three little incisions. Yeah. yeah that's, that's, that's my tattoo. tattoo. Yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Cindy well, thank Blanchard. you for having me. Uh, you've been here before to talk yes. about uh, kidney donation uh, and for Kidney Health Month too. So thank you. Very and I'd much. like to say that if anybody is even thinking about it and they want to reach out and talk to me about it, I am more than willing to meet one on one. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you for being here, Robbie. Thank you for bringing Cindy in. You're welcome. Great interview. Thank you very much.